given to Hook Finn. Look at this. 42-yard touchdown run. Wilson inside the 20. Do you love watching this little man from the state of Georgia? Mario Daniel, he just sheds the block and puts his 300-pound Looking for one of the most riveting stories in college football for 1996? You won't find it in South Bend, Gainesville, Tempe, or even Columbus. What unfolded in the rolling hills of southeastern Ohio has to go down as one of the college game's most dramatic turnarounds ever. Hello everyone, I'm Frank Robertson and welcome to Back in the Hunt, the story of the 1996 Ohio Bobcat football team. In the next few minutes, you'll get a special look at the program that defied all the preseason polls Weekly predictions and conventional wisdom to stun not only the Mid-American Conference, but the nation as well. We're a lot closer. We're a lot more cohesive. Uh, the offense is closer. The defense is closer. And then we're closer to the unit. And uh, I think that the coaches brought that back from the academy, which, uh, which was definitely part of the key to success was the closeness of the team. Every football fan knows that much of the script for the coming season is written well before kickoff, and the Bobcats were no exception. Come on, Ron. Come on, Ron. Here we go. Start stopping numbers. Here we go. Come on, now. Yeah. QBs, come on, now. Let's go. Nice throw, 14. Way back in August, with the heat and humidity hanging close to the practice field, Head coach Jim Grove and his staff of hard-working assistants put the framework in place, the blueprint for the excitement and achievement to come. And even Coach Grove helped fill the stands in Peden as he had fun with this television spot. Let there be light. Hi, I'm Jim Grove, head football coach of the Ohio Bobcats. Our first football game this season will truly be a first. This Thursday, we take on the Akron Zips at 7 o'clock in Peden Stadium. That's right, you heard me, 7 o'clock, our first night game ever. Come join us under the lights. It's going to be exciting. Come on, guys, open up. You're going to run some laps for this one. Wonder how many players ended up doing laps. Coach Grove and his Bobcats did ready themselves for a trip no Ohio football team had ever taken at Peden Stadium, ever. A trip under the lights. November 2nd, 1929, Ohio University made history when the Bobcats beat Miami 14 to nothing in the first game ever played at the newly constructed Peden Stadium. August 29th, 1996, history was made again when the Bobcats met the Akron Zips under the lights for the first night game ever in Peden. But first, a party. The first night game brings a new tradition to Bobcat home games, tailgating. I think it's a really neat opportunity for everybody to get together, and I think a night game is a great way to start off the season. More than 18,000 anxious fans fill the stadium nearly to capacity, something the Bobcats haven't seen in years. The whole thing is like a carnival. I'm just excited. You know, it'd be more exciting if we win. I hope we win. And the fans weren't disappointed. Touchdown, Kareem Wilson in Ohio's Bobcats. Gonna keep first down and more. Wilson inside the 20. Kareem Wilson inside the five down to the four yard line. Do you love watching this little man from the state of Georgia perform or what? He'll excite you right now. Hit it away. He's got a rush and Williams got it again. Sean Williams has rejected his second punt of the night. Oh, how about this young man, Sean Williams, absolutely scintillating, coming off that corner on special team work. Wilson going to start out to the right with Rue. Wilson, touchdown. Ohio's Bobcats now going to pull it down and look for some green. Oh, did he take a lick? Hello. He just got drilled by Tom Carter. This is your sin reader looking for the corner. Lost the football. Picked up by Ohio's David Walker. The freshman inside the 15. The exchange picked up. Football Ohio University with the return. Mark Stubbs. Touchdown OU. Murphy looks it over. 
Murphy on that straight dive. Steve Hookman in open space. Hookman inside the 10. Hookman to the corner. Touchdown. Ohio's Bobcats. Tremendous burst to get in the end zone from fullback Steve Hookman. Like a bug drawn to the deadly blue light on a humid summer night, the Zips were zapped by the Cats. See you later. Touchdown, Ohio and Kareem Wilson. People love it. You know, it's under the lights, first game, psyching everybody out for the season. It's going to be great. It's a very high-toned event, and the lights are amazing. It's, it's really fun to be here at night and, uh, and, uh, and see this kind of crowd. Whether it was the lights, the crowd, the mood, or plain hard work, in the end, the Bobcats crushed the Zips 44 to 14. Ohio's Bobcats. It was a great crowd. Uh, it's good to see the kids play hard and good things happen to them. We had some good breaks, and but I thought overall our kids played really hard. I asked our team the other night, you know, there was an article written in the paper and, you know, we talked about our schedule. Some of the, you know, sporting publications, some of the magazines preseason have talked about our schedule, you know, and I just threw it out to our players, you know, I said, guys, you know, how many of you don't want to go play Hawaii? You know, how many don't want to play Army in Northwestern, East Carolina? And to a man, everybody wants to take a shot at them. Now, is it, is it ambitious? Yeah, it really is. You know, our coaches know that those games are going to really be tough. Our players know that, but that's the fun of, of, of the challenge. You know, we don't really want to put any breathers on our schedule. I don't want anybody that I can't get excited to go play, and I don't think our players do either. Week two of the season saw the Cats take the road, and a long road it was. Busing through Ohio, in and out of airports, on and off planes, 10 hours of travel to wind up here, paradise. It didn't take Coach Grove long to remind the players why they were here. A Wednesday afternoon practice near the beach that produced immediate focus. It's more than a football game because it's great exposure for our university. I think to be able to take a trip like this and come to Honolulu to play football is something that a lot of kids dream about. So, uh, you know, it's going to be fun. We're going to do some neat things while we're over here. It's going to be a great experience for young student athletes to be able to make a trip like this. But more than anything else, we're here to win, and we're trying to keep our guys focused on that point. Thursday morning brought the warm Hawaiian sun and practice at a local high school to work out any lingering jet lag and iron out the game plan. Hey, hey! <laughs> Thursday night was a learning experience of sorts for the cats. <laughs> this one on Hawaiian culture. Kareem and company taking in the flavor of a Hawaiian luau. And what's a luau without the big chief getting on stage and strutting his stuff? It's like, it's a ball, it circles like this. He's getting into it, little by little. The day before game day, Friday morning, and the Cats get their first look at Aloha Stadium. Well, ready? Hey. December 7th, 1941, a day all Americans will remember. For members of the Bobcat football team, their history lesson on this day was more than just a field trip. It was time to reflect and pay tribute to the men and women of the armed forces while touring the USS Arizona at Pearl Harbor. Every time I come out here, I, I would, there's a little special place in my heart. Just what, uh, just makes you realize what uh, freedom means to you, and and what people went through to free us and make us have this today. Mac versus the Whack, and it doesn't take long for the Cats to do something special. Thank <laughs> you. 
Tyler Tanagawa, the long snapper. That ball is blocked. It is caught by number five of Ohio, Tavel Jones, and he will score. Sean Williams will be credited with the block. Williams had two punt blocks last week against Akron, and he comes in here against the Rainbows and blocks that one. Freitas in trouble, sack. First one to him. Well, the one that made the tackle was Bobby Holloway. Good defense again by Ohio. Well, it's kept by Wilson. Quickly to the 20. Quickly to the 15-yard line. Gives the ball. No, keeps it himself. Leaps to the five. Leaps to the goal line and scores. Touchdown for Ohio. Remember what we said about a bag full of Bobcats. Here's an example of it right here. Skinner again to throw. Being chased by Holloway and sacked by Holloway. Bobby Holloway, who has played a stellar game. He should take a piece of this turf with him back to Ohio. Skinner, broken play. Chasing him down, Mario Daniel. He's a 300-pounder clamping down on a freshman. Back to Pat Skinner, in trouble. They sack him. Fifth sack of the game for Ohio. Ball is given to Hookfin. Look at this. Hookfin. Touchdown. That will send the people to the exit. There was nobody behind the line of scrimmage. Hookman just motored into the secondary, put it on cruise control, and was gone. 42-yard touchdown run. And the Rainbows are shot. They are stunned. History, determination, pride. Just a few of the terms used when describing Ohio's next opponent, Army. And the same words Jim Grove hopes people will use to tag his program in the future. The Bobcats come into Mikey Stadium 2-0 for the first time since 1976. This will be the first meeting between the Cats and Cadets. And things started off with a bang. Ohio quarterback Kareem Wilson sets his team at the 12-yard line, drops to throw a wide-open Kareem Hill, touchdown Bobcats. Ohio takes a 6-0 lead over a highly ranked Army team here in West Point. Second and fourth, the 37 of Army. And it is Steve Hookfin breaking clear again. It's now a foot race. Hookfin down the sidelines. Wilson following. Hookfin end zone touchdown Bobcats. The speed of the Ohio fullback takes him down the sidelines for a 63 yard score. Cats lead at 14-0, Army threatens, Army scores on a Hewitt touchdown off right tackle. 14-6 Bobcats, Army threatening a sweep. Steve Hodge from the four-yard line goes in for the score. It's now 14-13. Mike Orlando under center, and he hands to his freshman fullback, Joe Fondale, touchdown Bobcats. Fondale bulls his way in. Ohio led this game 17-0, but they lose it 37-20. We knew the three road games were going to be brutal, uh, and, and it's lived up to our expectations. The trips, it feels like we've been on the road for about a month or a month and a half right now, and, uh, and it, it was a tough stretch. The Akron game was critical for us. We needed to open with a win. We knew we had three real tough road games coming up. Uh, the Hawaii game was special because that's just a real tough place to play. Uh, no matter what level of skill Hawaii's got from year to year, the trip itself's enough to kill you. So, you know, to go over there and win a game was really special. And to win out of conference, you know, to, to, to be a Mid-American Conference school and beat a team from the Western Athletic Conference was really, uh, I think, good for our program. And, and then going into Army, I think it took a little pressure off of us going into the Army game, which should have been good. But I'm not so sure that the trip and, uh, you know, we just started class classes that week and we were really sluggish in practice and really didn't have a real good week coming into the Army game. Uh, uh, didn't take its toll on our players, but certainly those first two wins were really big and I think what our players uh, know and realize right now is that there's probably nobody on our schedule we can't beat if we go out and play real good because we have some talent and we're, we're working hard enough to deserve to win and I think our kids feel comfortable now when they take the field that uh, we have a chance to win football games and that's that's really what the, the success in the first two games has done for us. In game four, the Cats continue to rack up the miles. For the third consecutive week, 
Ohio plays on the road, this time traveling to Evanston, Illinois, to take on the Big Ten champion Northwestern in the Wildcats' home opener. Fourth and goal to go. That's the margin. Now they do give it to Autry, and he is met and stopped shy of the goal line. Carter comes up and fills the hole quickly. They'll do the draw to Adrian Autry. He's got some room. He calls up the football. It's loose. Ohio's on it. This is Schnur. He'll give it to Darnell Autry. He'll try to turn the corner. And Darnell Autry is into the end zone for Northwestern. This is Schnur. Trying to throw into the end zone on the timing pass. And he's got Darren Drexler as tight end for the touchdown. Jim, you have a very young ball club. What did you tell them at half? We've got to pull together. We're not an offense. We're not a defense. We're not a kicking game. We've got to, everybody's in there holding hands and pulling together. And we're going to be a good team. We're going to, we're getting better. We're going to be better. But we got, this is a great test for us. See how we come out and fight them here in the second half. Third and goal from the one for Northwestern. No surprise. Autry denied again. The fourth and goal to go from the one. Darnell Autry. Autry stood up. Autry. And the second spectacular goal line stand by Ohio. Lots to build upon for Ohio here against the defending Big Ten champion. The ball is picked off. Lee Barber has picked off the football. Steve Schnurry got up into the passing lane and he picked it off. Sophomore Kareem Wilson sends his running back straight ahead for the score. Ohio breaks in and breaks out and is on the scoreboard. A final score, Northwestern 28, Ohio 7. Finally, back to Athens in the home fans. And those fans and the student body respond, setting a new Pete in attendance record. Over 21,000 fill the stadium to watch the Cats claw the Eagles. This is Wilson, straight ahead to Hookfin. Hookfin has some room. Steve Hookfin around his own net at midfield. Hookfin finally forced out of bounds by Phil Franklin inside the 46-yard line. Steve Hookfin so dangerous if he's got just a little bit of a seam. As the numbers begin to stack up for the freshman, and he is going to be buried. I believe that's Tommy Smith coming on the blitz. He came free. He wasn't a count of four blitz right up the middle. Man coverage behind him. Nobody saw him coming to the last minute. Wilson now stepped back to throw the football. Looking downfield, has a man wide open, and Hank Ray has nothing but six points in front of it. Ohio's on the board. Option pass, that's tough. That brings the, brings the defensive backs up, they can run, and then he ran right behind him, wide open. Second and six. This is Church on the play action. Sending it downfield. Picked off by Brandon Kane. Beg your pardon, it's Mark Stubbs. Mark Stubbs coming to the near sideline, and now it's Cowboys and Indians. Still on his feet. Wants a block from Tavelle Jones. Still on his feet. And finally hammered down. Mark Stubbs stepped in front of the receiver. What a huge play for the Ohio Bobcats. And this one will go into the books. And Ohio has gone to 2-0 in the Mid-American Conference and 3-2 overall. Time has expired, and Ohio has gotten it done. By playing hard, you know, you can really achieve a lot of things. You know, when you take that play off, you know, that's, that could be the big play to kill you. It's a whole different karma. Everybody feel, you know, everybody, not just me, you know, feels that we got a chance to take it. When the Cats took the field in week six to face Ball State in Muncie, Ohio was tied for first place in the MAC with Toledo. And Cardinal fans knew the Cats were dealing from a new deck. Wilson on an option, makes a nice pitch. The ball is caught by Damian Maxwell, and he flies up the sidelines. Easily first down yardage as he wheels over the 35 to the 40-yard line. And it is a quarterback sneak, and Kareem Wilson may be there. Touchdown, Ohio. Big play here. The Cats are going to go for it. B.J. Franklin catches the ball way over midfield at the 30-yard line. He is out of bounds, and the Cats are on a roll. Here we go, Kareem Wilson under center. He fakes to his fullback, Kareem keeps, and it is touchdown, Bobcats. He keeps on the option, and Murphy's away, and he's got the first down, and he flies the sidelines across the 50 to the 40, to the 35, and to the 33-yard line, and David Murphy gets 37 yards on that play, and the first down for the Bobcats. Baldwin with the ball gives to Moore, and he is there. Michael Blair making the move across the end zone for the touchdown. This is a big one. Third down and three Ohio from the 46 of Ball State. And it is hook pin, and he breaks it. He is clean. He is gone. He is out of here. It is touchdown Ohio. Hookfin rips it right down the middle, 46 yards, and the Bobcats have taken 
A 23 to 17 lead. There's a snap in the placement. He kicks it up and it is good. The Bobcats have scored three on their possession in the first overtime. Brent Baldwin out of the eye formation. Gives to Leandre Moore. He slices to the right side. Touchdown. Ball speed. Bobcats lose it after a 17 to nothing lead. This game belongs to the Cardinals as they score a touchdown in the first overtime period to top the field goal by Ohio. And the final score here this afternoon is 30 to 27. Ball State over Ohio. Week seven brings typical football weather to Northeast Ohio as the Cats travel to Kent to take on the Flashes. The Bobcats have had the upper hand over the last five years and hope to keep the dark cloud directly over Dick Stadium yet again. And rolls right to throw or run. He's going to run. He's got some yardage to the 20. He breaks open at the 30 and the 40 and is out to the 50. Back to throw is Kareem Wilson. Rushes on, steps up in the pocket. Wide open receiver. He hits him at the seven yard line. It's first and goal. He won Inanji. And Kareem Wilson wants to run it wide left. He's at the five, the three. Touchdown, Ohio. Out of the shotgun works Todd Goble. Looks over the middle. Pump fake. Wheels one over the middle. Intercepted by Carter at the 40. Carter at the 35, Carter at the 33 yard line, and down he goes. So Carter intercepts, and the Cats are on the prowl again. Hookpin gets the call and breaks it. He's at the 40, the 30, the 20, the 10, the 5, and touchdown, Ohio. How many times has this big fullback broken it? I think everybody's more focused. I think that's, that's one thing. Um, like it's just everybody, everybody concentrating on one goal. Everybody wanting to, uh, everybody wanting to win. Everybody wanting to turn everything around. Just being really focused on the, on the issue at hand. The Bobcats ruined Parents' Day at Kent, and today's mission is to excite the largest homecoming crowd ever with a win over Bowling Green and an upping the conference mark to 4-1. and one. Kareem Wilson under center, second down eight. Kareem fakes to the fullback, he keeps, he's loose, down the sidelines to the 20, to the 10, one man to beat, he beats him. Touchdown Bobcats, Ohio goes up, six to nothing, Kareem Wilson skirting the sideline. Fake to the fullback, Kareem keeps again, Kareem cuts, Kareem scores his second touchdown of the game, and the Cats are on a roll. Mark Moe flushed out of the pocket, racing left, Calgaro after him, he sacks him at the 21-yard line. Kareem Wilson back to throw, big rush, gets it away, Damian Maxwell, end zone, touchdown Ohio. Mark Mall back to pass. He's under pressure, but he avoids it. And here it comes again. It's Raheem Slice who grabs him by the shirt and finally nails him. A sack for Raheem Slice. Kareem Wilson drops back to throw. Takes a look. Nothing there. He tucks it. And the Energizer Bunny is on his way again as he breaks one tackle, another, a third. Regains his balance, hits the sidelines. He's at the 20, gets a tremendous block from Franklin to the 10. Touchdown into the record books. I think it's huge, Paul, the way it turned out. I mean, 38 to nothing. Nobody ever dreamed starting this football game that we could beat Bowling Green 38 to nothing. So what we did is we really hit on all cylinders. We had great special teams. I think our offense certainly, you know, fired early in the first half and kind of put the game out of reach. And then I was really pleased with our defense. And our defense kept them out of the end zone with really a lot of our seconds playing most of the second half. So I think it was good experience for our young guys. And, and I think our guys really had fun. And, and we really came to play today. After roasting the Falcons 38 to zip and recording a second straight home shutout, the Cats traveled to Kalamazoo to corral the Broncos at Waldo Stadium. Coach Grove and his staff know it's not going to be easy. 
The Bobcats haven't beaten Western since 1985. And Wilson wants to throw, and he's got a wide open receiver, and it is caught, and it is touchdown Ohio, B.J. Franklin. Right over the middle, wide open. B.J. breaks on a post pattern, and Wilson hits him right in the numbers, and there is nobody near him. And to throw is Wilson over the middle deep. He's got a man, and it's complete to Riz Buckman at the 30, 25, 20, 15, 10. Touchdown, Bobcat. Riz Buckman taking the pass and going 54 yards. Over back to throw it again. And he fires, and it is picked off. And this could be the distance. The bell. The 40, the 50, and the bell is at the 30. Jones now at the 20, the 10, and Tavell Jones scores. Touchdown, Bobcats. Well, I think our whole football team played hard. We didn't play real well at times. I thought it took our offense a while to get going, but we did what we needed to do to win. This was a tough environment for us. You know, they're playing really emotional football, and the weather was terrible, and we're a long way from home, and had a big emotional win over Bowling Green. So for us, this was a good win for us to get. When I think of Coach Grove, I think of a person who's straight, who shoots straight from the hip. Um, what he says goes, and um, he's a... Uh, a man of his word, what he, what he says is, you know, you better take it to heart because uh, it's not like he's um, going to say one thing and then do another thing behind your back. If he says that if you don't do this play right or you don't, um, you know, block right, that he'll find somebody else to put in there who will do it. And when he says that, you better, you know, wake up and get going or you might be sitting on the bench. On a day that started out better suited for polar bears, the Cats traveled to Oxford to face rival Miami. Looking into the eyes of the Ohio players before the game, you know holding on to a piece of first place in the Mid-American Conference is on their minds. All of you know what we got to do today, men. We got to set the tone physically. Take care of that football. We can't start out slow. We got to catch the football. We got to take care of the football starting out. Defensively, we got to start fast. Can't start slow. We got to be fast on offense and defense. Speed of the game. Kicking game's critical. You know how important kicking game is this week. We got to be great in the kicking game. There's the pitch. This is Riz Buckman out of Dayton, Ohio, and Buckman pounds across the 35-yard line out to the 40 as Ohio gets the option offense going in very good fashion here early in this contest. A little bit different conditions than he's used to. There came the block, and it looks as if it is at least swift, if nothing else. It'll roll dead at the 31-yard line. Sean Williams did a really good job of getting his hands on the ball and not running into the kicker. He got control of his feet and came off to the side. Short drop, pump fake. All alone in the end zone is Jay Hall, and he's got it for the Miami touchdown. Miami gets into the trenches. Morris will hand to Prentice, and Prentice is into the end zone. Travis Prentice scores. Kareem Wilson over the middle, touchdown Bobcats. Damian Maxwell on the front end of the reception, and the Bobcats are on the board. Our final score this afternoon, Miami 24 and Ohio 8. Finally, the last road game of the 1996 season. Without a doubt, the Cats put in enough miles to claim college football's frequent flyer sweepstakes. Well, this week, Ohio travels south to play East Carolina in Greenville, North Carolina. With a bid to the Las Vegas Bowl dash, the Cats hope to frustrate the Pirates' own postseason plans. Inside the 10, inside the 5, he's in. Touchdown, Pirates. Cuts it to the outside of the 5, dives for the pylon, and he's in. Wilson's got it. He's going to tuck it. And he's going to go in for the touchdown. Wilson brings him out again. This time the fake, and he can walk this one in. He's got daylight. He's in. Touchdown, Pirates. Going to the right side. Man is wide open. It's caught by Scott Richards. He's in. Touchdown. It goes to Hook Finn. He's gone. Touchdown, Pirates. Scott Harley. Right side. Harley is in. He'll hand it off to Scott Harley. Is this number six? Yep. It is. Here's Orlando, and he'll keep it himself and score. Griffin takes it in for the touchdown. Here's the pass over the middle. It's caught. You can put some more points on the board. Three, two, one. You can paint this one purple. The Pirates win it 55 to 45. With a young football team, you really have to take baby steps. You have to go one, one game at a time. You can't really dream. You can't wish and hope for things to happen. And the things we have to do with our team is to convince them that if we go out and block and tackle real well, we can win. The last game of the season at home versus Toledo at Peden. Ohio's been dominant to say the least, allowing only 14 points while racking up three wins on home turf. This will also be the day to say goodbye to 12 seniors, a dozen student athletes who have made this season the most memorable in recent history.
third and goal Bobcats, and Kareem Wilson fakes to his fullback hook fin, pitches to Hank Ray, who walks into the end zone, flips the ball to the official, and the Bobcats have taken a 6-3 lead over the Rockets here this afternoon. 39 as Ryan Huzak drops to throw, fires to the corner of the end zone, tremendous catch by James Briggs, touchdown Toledo. Third, third down, 10 yards to go, Huzak to throw, rushes on Andre Jackson, sacks him at the 22, so for a 40-yard try, it is blocked by the Bobcats, Raheem Slice picks it up on first bounce, Mike Orlando digs down for the snap and gets it, again he follows hook Finn. touchdown Bobcats. Mike Orlando rolling through for the score, and Ohio brings it back to a 17-13 score with 57 seconds remaining in the third period. And here is Orlando to the 5-3 touchdown, Bobcat. Mike Orlando scoring his second touchdown of the game. He has sparked this team to come from behind to take a 21-17 lead. Huzak drops, looks for Kreitzberg. He's not open. He throws it anyway. Kreitzberg breaks open, catches the ball, touchdown Rocket. From 54 yards out, Brian Houston. Ball is snapped and placed, and the kick is up, and it is yours. Hitting on the eighth, it would have been right through had he been five yards closer i think he might have made it it was a wonderful try by brian houston another five yards and he would have had it but ohio after leading in this game suffers a heartbreaking loss to toledo 24 to 23 but i want to tell you what if you like college football you'd have loved this football game 1996 Ohio football, the high-octane triple option offense and a bruising aggressive defense add up to one of the most impressive and exciting turnarounds in the college game. And along the way, plenty of memories for players, fans, and coaches. And speaking of coaches, the voice of the Bobcats on the Ohio Sports Network, Hub Burton, is with head coach Jim Grove in Peden Stadium. Hub? Frank, thanks very much. Hub Burton alongside Ohio head football coach Jim Grove. And Jim, before the snow flies here in Peden Stadium and winter settles in, what sorts of thoughts, recollections, and memories do you have of this remarkable 1996 season? Well, you know, Hub, I think we had a great football year, uh, a lot of excitement. I think probably more than anything else, missed opportunities will be what we look back on. I think uh, it's certainly the Ball State game where we were up 17 points and late in the third quarter had a couple turnovers, let them get back in, ended up tied, and went into overtime will be uh, something that we look back on as, as kind of, a, uh, you know, the, the downfall of our conference uh, run at the championship. I think, uh, uh, you know, the Ball State game was one that we physically won the football game but just made too many youthful mistakes to win. And then the Toledo game, of course, is one that we're going to continue to remember that we had a great opportunity there and just, uh, you know, two or three yards short of making a game-winning field goal on the last play of the game will be something certainly that we'll remember. But we've got to remember the good times, too. You know, we, we had a great uh, opening win against Akron in a record crowd, and we had a, a great win at Hawaii. Not many people go to the island and went over there. Uh, had a great win against Bowling Green. So lots of ups and downs, but I think, unfortunately, what a lot of our players and coaches will look to will be missed opportunities. Very quickly, you had some great individual performances throughout the course of the year. We really did. Uh, Kareem Wilson, uh, you know, Offensive Player of the Year this year in the, in the Mid-American Conference, and Steve Hook fan over a 1,000 yards rushing, as did Kareem, and that's only only the 24th time in NCAA history that two backs in the same backfield have rushed for over a thousand yards. Uh, you know, we, we were sixth in the nation in rushing as a team. Uh, we, of course, led the Mid-American Conference in rushing. We were first in the Mid-American Conference in total defense, first in rushing defense in the conference, and 17th in the country in total defense. So uh, we played pretty well as a team, you know, both offensively and defensively. We did good things, blocked a ton of punts, Sean Williams. You know, blocked a bunch of punts for us this year, blocked a field goal for us, and so our special teams really did some outstanding things this year. All in all, it was a year where we really played well, 
uh, in all three areas, we just made too many mistakes. And we're, you know, when you're starting nine or ten sophomores and two or three true freshmen every week, it's hard not to make some mistakes, but our kids sure had fun and played hard. As exciting as things were between the lines, Coach, tremendous excitement generated by some record-shattering crowds. Must have been a tremendous lift to see them just pack Peden Stadium week oh, in, week out. I'll tell you, Hub, we've really got a home field advantage now. I mean, we really do. Our first year here, we had terrible weather. We weren't a very good football team. We were really young, starting a lot of freshmen, and really weren't as competitive as we need to be. And, and we didn't have very good crowds, and, and I really did not look forward uh, to playing at home any more than I did playing on the road. I thought we had as good a chance on the road as we did at home because we just didn't have very good crowds. And this year, it's just been phenomenal. Our player, I tell you, our players as much as anybody look forward to playing in Peden Stadium. This is a great place to play a football game. And with the enthusiasm of our fans and our students who've just been outstanding. You know, we, I think we had uh, over 6,000 students at the, at the Bowling Green game and at the Eastern Michigan game. And, and they brought us home at Eastern Michigan. We won 7 nothing, and there were a lot of uh, uh, situations in, in the game that were tough, and, and they pulled our guys through. So it's a lot of fun right now. I mean, it's fun to be in town. Our players walk around with their head up now. They're, they enjoy going to class because everybody's patting them on the back. And it's just a fun environment now to, to not only coach football in, to play football in, but to play at Peden Stadium right now is really special. You raised some expectations around uh, the country uh, with six wins. You played competitively against some top opponents. Um, now you have to think about the future of Ohio football. What do you see in the crystal ball? We're going to be good. We're going to be real good. I think our danger is that, that we, we uh, look back on this season and say we've arrived. We have not arrived. We've got a lot of work to do. We're still going to play a lot of young football players. We're not an established program yet. We, we've, got, we've got tough people to play. We've got a lot of challenges ahead of us. We did not uh, do as well this past year as we could have done. I mean, we feel like we did some good things, but I want our players and our coaches to realize we're not there, and we've got a lot of work ahead of us, but the sky's the limit. I, I really believe that we can be a, a very good football team, and I think that we have uh, the opportunity and, and the ability in the, in the not too distant future. I'm not saying it's going to happen next year or the year after, but I think we have the opportunity to be a conference champion and go to bowl games here, and that's our goal, and that's what we're going to do. Well, we can only look forward to 1997 with as much anticipation and excitement as we had in 1996. Now let's check back in with Frank Robertson. Frank? All right, Hub, thanks very much. You know, one of the things Coach Grove did not mention was that he was named the MAC LCI Coach of the Year. From the first day that I met Coach Grove, I said he's a winner. There's something about him. There's some things in life you have a gut feeling. And there's something about him. And I told the president and I told the athletic director, he will win at Ohio University, and he did. And I'm certainly, he's not content with his season, but I'll tell you, Coach, you got a great start in two years. It's my pleasure now to introduce the Mid-American Conference Coach of the Year, Coach Grove of Ohio University. Congratulations, Coach. The football players at Ohio University have ripped up the record books, filled our scrapbooks, and brought an exciting playbook back to southeastern Ohio. With Ohio back in the hunt, nobody can wait until next year. I'm Frank Robertson, and I'll see you at Peden for the Cats' home opener against Kent. Ball is given to hook in. Look at this. 42-yard touchdown run. Wilson inside the 20. Do you love watching this little man from the state of Georgia? Mario Daniel, he just sheds the block and puts his 300 pound line and scores. Touchdown for Ohio. Man, come on now. What is this? <laughs> Don't kill me. Say <laughs> aloha. Aloha. Give me my hand. 
Okay, are you ready for this? A big game in the Mid-American Conference, Akron and Ohio University. Ohio U pumped for a power move, and you know who could hardly wait for this game? Frank Robertson, full of school spirit. The Ohio U graduate blew out of here yesterday after 6. We'll be back today at noon to get the uniform on. Frank's Bobcats in green. Watch the moves. Here.